Okay, then let's get started, I guess. So, so welcome to my talk, um, Flink SQL in 2012. Um, first, I want to introduce myself. So, I'm Timo Walther. I'm an Apache Flink committer and part of the project management committee of Apache Flink. I have been working on Flink for a very long time now. So I'm part of the Flink team before it actually became part of the Apache Software Foundation. Um, right now I'm working as a software engineer um, at Viverica. So Viverica um, was called Data Artisans before and got recently acquired by Alibaba. Um, at Viverica, I am part of the SDK team um, and I'm focusing mostly on the table and SQL API and its ecosystem. So for those of you that don't know much about Flink, I will also give you like a very, very short introduction to what is actually Apache Flink. So Apache Flink is a distributed data processing system. Um, as you can see, we support a variety of use cases. You can build event-driven applications, you can build um, streaming pipelines. Um, you can do combined batch and stream analytical uh, pipelines. All of that on different storage systems, on different um, um, deployments like Kubernetes, Yarn, Mesos, and so on. You can connect to a variety of different um, um, external systems for storage, like um, um, real-time event queues like Kafka, you can also connect to databases, file systems, other key value stores. So everything, like most, most of the data can be processed with Flink from logs to transactions to clicks, IoT, um, different, different things. Um, if you want to summarize Flink in one sentence, like typical uh, marketing sentences, you will find all the keywords in this sentence. So Flink allows you to, to do stateful computations over streams, and it does that in a real-time fashion, but you can also process historical data fast, scalable, fault-tolerant, with event time semantics. You can process very large state in the orders of terabytes, and all of that can be happening in exactly once, with exactly once guarantees. Um, so in this talk, I will mostly focus on, on SQL, but there are a lot of other flexible, expressive APIs for different use cases. We have a complex event processing API. We have a stateful function API. We have a data stream API. Um, yeah, it is worth to look into the other APIs as well. And as I said before, um, from the correctnesses or guarantees we can give exactly one state consistency, and event time semantics are one of the most important features of Flink. Um, and it also has, like Flink has already proven at scale, um, it runs on tens of, uh, of thousands of cores uh, and manages already terabytes, tens of terabytes of state, um, either in memory or on disk. Um, here you can see some of the users of Flink. Alibaba is a very big user of Flink, um, but we also have uh, telecom companies, we have banks, um, we have e-commerce companies um, like Zalando or Auto Group, um, Yelp, Uber, all the big tech companies are, um, are in this chart, as you can see. So, but now let's focus on, on SQL. Um, what is Flink SQL in a nutshell? So basically what we aim is to have a standard compliant SQL service that allows you to query both static and also non-static streaming data like um, um, data um, while building on top of Flink, which means we can leverage all the performance of Flink, the scalability, 
the exactly one's consistency and so on. Um, so maybe quickly explain again, what, what do we uh, understand under streaming SQL semantics? So first of all, um, usually tables are not static. Tables, they, they change over time. Um, think about like transactions um, um, from applications, or we have inserts, continuous inserts from some ETL processes. Um, if you think about traditional database systems, traditional processes uh, of SQL, those are usually working on static snapshots of a table or static files or something. So that means they, the, 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 the query input is basically finite but also the result is finite. And once the query has been executed, uh, the result is also definitive. Um, streaming SQL means that you actually have more of, like you basically, you, you, um, you create standing queries, like you're running continuous querying. You, you spe specify these queries once on changing or how we call it dynamic tables. So that means that the, the query input is unbounded. And then the result obviously is also um, unbounded and is continuously um, updated. And a very, very important um, thing to note here is even though we have, a, we have stream SQL, what we aim for is having the same semantics of a query. So it doesn't matter if you run the same query on a bounded static snapshot, snapshot of a table or on a continuously changing table. So how do we actually um, achieve that? So first of all, let's look at how traditional databases process a static table. So data comes in, but we don't process the data yet. We have to trigger some execution. We, we, we specify our query. Um, so we take the entire data as input, we are processing the query, and then we are um, outputting uh, the result at the end. So in this case, we have um, some, some clicks, some URL clicks at different point in time. Um, in the end, we are computing a count. So Mary has a count of two, and Bob has a count of one. So let's look how would a continuous query on a changing table look like. So we have the same data coming in step by step. We have our query defined. And what happens now is that whenever a row comes in, we are also already producing an output row immediately. So in this case, Mary has a count of one. Then Bob comes in. Bob has also a count of one. Then another Mary comes in. And as you can see, we just updated the count from one to two in the results table. But as you can see, like in the end, if we have processed all records, um, the result is identical to the, to the one-time query, at least at this point in time. Why is this batch and stream unification so important? Um, so first of all, um, usability. We don't wanna have like a custom stream SQL syntax no, we want to be standard compliant. So you just have a declarative um, industry-wide language. Um, and we are trying not to have any streaming specific results or semantics. So also from a portability point of view, you can copy, a, uh, uh, I don't know, like a SQL query from an Oracle database over to Flink SQL or back. Um, in, the, in the best case, that should work. Um, and also from a portability point of view, you can run the same query on bounded and on unbounded data. So you can also decide when you want to start in the long um, timeline of your data. I mean, you have data from the past, you will have data in the future, and you have some data until now. And you, with, this, with this flexible semantics, you can basically decide instead of, um, instead of um, like cutting the timeline into pieces, you can define where you want to uh, where you want to start the processing. Do you want to start it now for the future? Do you want to start it somewhere in the past until now, or even from somewhere in the past and bootstrapping the state, backfilling 
the results from historical data, and then you're processing um, into the future. So this is up to you. Um, next topic we have to talk about is what about time? Because actually we are not in the streaming space. We are in the uh, we are in the streaming space. So what does that mean? Time is a very important building block when it comes to streaming, um, especially because um, some of the operations might need some um, some semantics of some temporal um, temporal um, yeah operations. Um, so I don't want to get into the details here because I want to start uh, with a demo. But what I can say is that Flink SQL supports sophisticated event time handling. Under the hood, we are using the concept of watermarks that is also um, used um, at, uh, for, for other, uh, or at other frameworks. Um, but usually, this is not necessary for the user. So internally, we are performing some streaming optimizations but those don't affect the SQL queries itself. So it's just an internal optimization. So what we are trying to do is to keep the state size low. We try to clean up state um, whenever this is possible. We are triggering computations um, based on watermarks um, if, this is, if, this, if this is possible. But we will see that in the demo. Um, so how does our demo look like? Um, we have different storage systems. So the demo is pretty huge. Uh, we have Apache Kafka, we have MySQL, we have an S3-like dummy storage with MinIO. Um, we are using Hive as a meta, meta store to store some catalog metadata. Um, we use Flink as the processing unit that unifies batch and stream processing for all these systems. Um, and we will also show how we process continuous queries in Kafka and MySQL. So our demo environment looks like this. So that we are using the SQL client, that's a, this a CLI client, uh, um, um, part of uh, Apache Flink um, standards uh, distribution. Um, yeah, we have Hive Metastore here. We will submit queries to Flink's job manager. The job manager will schedule jobs and execute the queries on the, the worker nodes, the task managers, those are executing the task and communicate to all the systems. Um, we have like a little script in the Docker image um, that serves as a data provider and it will ingest data a little bit slower into Kafka so that not all the data is immediately available, but slowly is dropping into, into our systems. Um, for our demo, we are using um, a schema that is very similar to the very famous TPCH benchmark, um, but we have modified that a little bit. So, I mean, typical, it is also typical in other, um, other streaming or like in other uh, companies that you don't have just one system. So in this case, frequently updating tables are stored in Kafka. So we have orders, line items, and um, light items have a currency, so um, we also have a rates history so that we can convert the currency into euros. Um, and then we have like seldomly updated tables that are stored in MySQL, such as region, nation, customer, um, um, and also rates for different use case. So let's start with the demo. Um, yeah, like 40 minutes for this talk are not optimal. Um, we will see how far we can get in this in this um, uh, 40 minutes. Um, the demo is available, so you can download the Docker image, the, the, the demo data, um, all here uh, on GitHub. So let me start. Um, so first I have to start my Docker container. So all the systems are starting up. Um, we can also quickly show that we have actually stored something in Kafka. So let's quickly show something here. So I'm querying Kafka for the orders. I hope it works, yeah. Here you can see the orders are coming in slowly but steadily. We can also quickly look into MySQL. 
So this is the MySQL client. We can show the tables in. We can show the tables in MySQL. So all of the, the customer production tables are here. We can also describe them real quick. This is how a, like the customer table looks like. Um, yeah, we have some MinIO running, as you can see right now, like this is this replaces our S3 storage. Um, as you can see right now, it is empty, but we will fill this, uh, this storage soon. Um, we have Flink running, um, and Flink is running, uh, it's just waiting for jobs. So let's get started with the SQL client. So first of all, we have already registered some uh, dynamic tables. Those are Kafka-based. We put the we have put them in uh, in in the default catalog. So with the show tables command, we can simply list our tables that are backed by by Kafka topics. Um, we can also describe our production orders here. As you can see, um, yeah, those this is the schema that is stored in the Kafka topic. We can also read from the Kafka topic from within the SQL client. And here you can see how the, how the events are coming in in real time um, into, the, um, into the client. Takes some time. Yeah. And as you can see, slowly the data is coming in. We can also pause this whole thing and maybe look into some of the rows, some of the data if we're interested. For the MySQL tables, we have stored the meta information about the MySQL tables in Hive. So we are using the Hive catalog um, here, and then we are showing the tables there. Here's the customer, the nation, the rates, and the region. Same as before, we can also read from MySQL and print the bounded result here. That's it. The program finished because yeah, it's not a it's not Kafka. It's just MySQL, and we just list the table. So let's get started with some um, with some real queries. Um, we start with static with static data. Let's assume we want to query some data. So we we basically want to fork our production data from Kafka, and maybe we want to store some of some 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 snapshot of the production data in some development um, 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 file. So what we are doing here, we are creating a table. We are calling this table dev orders. We are defining the schema. We say we want to back this table by file system uh, with an S3 storage. Uh, and we want to have that as a CSV uh, format. So I'm registering the table. And now we can simply fill the the table with some data from Kafka. So now we are reading from Kafka and inserting into this CSV file. We can also see that in the UI, so the Flink job is running here. It's a very simple job. And the min.io storage should show a file now, hopefully. OK, it doesn't, but it should. Okay, let's hope that this is not a problem. So let me cancel the job again. Okay, there, there is, it's just a very tiny CSV file. That's why it wasn't showing. Um, cool, so that means now we have forked a little bit of the production data into our, into our CSV file. Um, we can also query our CSV file now, um, as before. Select star from dev orders, and here's the content of the of the CSV file. We can perform like regular SQL. So, for example, let's count the number of rows that is that are in these CSV files. Yeah, we have one thousand rows in there. And 
And an important thing to know is right now we were actually executing this into in the streaming mode because batch is just a special case of streaming. If you want to do this a bit, little bit more performant, you can also enable the batch mode so that speeds up queries a little bit. Um, so now let's look at a, at a little bit more complex query. Let's assume we want to compute the revenue per currency and minute uh, in our orders. Um, this would be like a typical SQL query. So, SQL query, so we are doing a group by, we are sealing the order time to minute, then we are doing some counting and some summing. Um, we can execute that, of course. So here would be the result. Um, yeah, that is the batch way of doing it. We can also go back into, uh, into the streaming mode and have more like real-time um, results instead of just having one final result at the end. So let's execute the same query again. And as you can see, the results are exactly the same. But now I want to show you a little bit um, some, some more information about what is going on under the hood. Um, for that, I'm changing the result mode. So what I want to show you is that Flink is actually, under the hood, is actually a change log processor. And if we are executing the query like this one, um, again, with this other view, you can see that actually what comes out of the runtime is are changing rows, so like basically deletions and insertions. So whenever a count changes, we are updating um, the old row and inserting a new row. And that is not always what we want in a streaming fashion. What we want sometimes is a little bit more efficient state handling um, and event time semantics, so that you always have insert-only changes coming out of your pipeline. And for that, we have actually um, prepared functions that you can use. For example, in this case, um, we are using a tumbling function. So this tumble end and tumble here, group by tumble, does exactly the same as the previous query. But this, this time, the query is a little bit more streamified. That means if we execute this query, um, you can actually see that only insertions come out um, come out of the runtime because the, the runtime waits until a watermark comes in and based on the watermarks um, the system knows okay for until here I can do the processing without having to emit another updating um, row so only inserts can be emitted at the end. So let's go back to the original execution mode and also the result mode. Let's talk a little bit more um, about, about streaming. Um, especially when, when we talk about streaming, um, joining data is, I guess, one of the most important topics um, in, um, in data processing. Um, so I want to start with a regular join, and then I want to show you five different ways of how can we join data in Flink. So the first regular join um, would just happen on static tables. So we can just use our Hive catalog um, and yeah, perform like regular SQL. I, don't, I think I don't have to explain this query. It looks complicated, but yeah, it just joins some of the dev orders with the production customers in MySQL, production nation, production region, like a yeah, complex join operation. And then in the end, it does some, some counting. Yeah, nothing fancy. Every database system can also do that. The difference is that we're querying different systems here. Yeah, this would be the result. Um, so how does it actually look like if we go back to streaming? Um, so again, we have the same query. Um, we are in the streaming mode now. And as you can see, also this query works. So here, 
um, we are not joining with the with the CSV file anymore, but here we are really joining Kafka with um, MySQL tables. Yeah, as you can see, this is real time, so we are always joining the newest Kafka record with the tables in MySQL. And yeah, it's a never ending query. Um, the properties, like some notable properties of this join is, um, the problem of streaming is, or like the, of the semantics of a join in MySQL is that in theory, all tables can change at any time. So the system needs to keep all the tables in Flink state, which can be very, very expensive. So ideally what you want to do is time bound the join a little bit, because maybe you know that within a certain time period, um, all the rows will arrive. So like, I don't know, like in a window of 10 minutes, the matching rows should have arrived and we can perform the join. And after that, we, are, we can also discard uh, rows that we don't need anymore. And that's also what I'm showing in the next, um, in the next example. So this example shows um, an interval join in Flink. Let me show the query first. Um, so what does this join do? We are joining the production line item table and the production orders. So again, orders are Kafka, line items are, um, are um, also Kafka in this case. So we are joining two Kafka topics. And here you can see we are defining some, um, some time-based um, constraint where we say, okay, the line item order time must be between the order order time plus uh, a minus um, five minutes. So in this case, Flink can um, efficiently execute um, this join and will we'll also just keep the last five minutes in state for performing and computing this join. The next topic is that sometimes maybe you also want to do like a stream enrichment. So the stream comes in, um, like a, an event comes in in Kafka and you actually want to enrich um, this event with some data from MySQL. Um, we are using the for system, uh, we are using the for system time as of semantics of SQL. That means um, in this case, um, Whenever a line item comes in, we are looking up um, the row based on, on the key here in MySQL. So we are performing a request to MySQL, give me um, the information about this currency at this, um, at just at the current time. So we are just looking up the current value of the, or like the current, the, the current currency um, conversion rate at the, current wall clock time. This can be done um, in this, um, this query. But sometimes what you actually want to do is you want to compute results um, or you want to perform um, a join with the conversion rate at that point in time. So you don't want to look up in MySQL at the current time, but you want to look up Let's, as, let's assume we have an event coming in at 12. We want to know the currency conversion at this point in time, at 12. So in event time, basically. And we want to also quickly process maybe historical data. And we want to, at, at every point in time, we always want to use the value, the conversion rate that was valid for this point in time. And this is also possible um, in Flink. Um, we are calling this like temporal table join. Um, this is how the query looks like. So we have registered a special temporal table before. And this temporal table is basically a, temp, uh, a parameterized view. That means you are giving in the order time of the line items and the temporal table will give you um, the conversion or the currency conversion rate at that point in time. Um, 
yeah, I can also show it in how it is executed. Um, but I think it's not super fancy to see that. But like just so, so that you know, there are different ways of joining in Flink for different use cases. Um, and in, 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 in the case of the temporal table join, you can even put the rates, the updating rates um, into a Kafka topic. So everything is backed by Kafka and, and can be computed not based on processing time, but really on the time when the event happened. So one last feature that I want to show you um, is pattern matching in Flink. Um, maybe you have heard of the match recognize clause. So match recognize is pretty new in the SQL standard and it allows you to really do like complex event processing and finding patterns um, in your tables. Um, for that, um, I need a couple of, of lines. So I will quickly um, explain what I want to do in this demo. Um, the, 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 the goal of this query is I want to find customers that have changed their delivery behavior. That means I want to search for a pattern where the last X line items had a regular shipping. And then from now to from then to now, um, the customer doesn't want like a pay on pay on delivery. Um, like, yeah, the, 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 like he was always paying in advance and now he wants to pay uh, on delivery. Um, so first we need to create a helper view for that. Um, this helper view um, just joins the production line items with the production orders. It's the same it's a similar query that I showed uh, before. So it's a it's an interval join around five minutes. And now comes the important part um, based on this view. So we have line items and orders joined together. Um, now I want to execute this query. So here you can see the match recognize clause. Um, we are doing positioning, order by, and then we are doing some measurements. And here you can see the patterns that we are looking for. So we are defining the patterns, other and COD, collect and delivery. Um, and the patterns are defined as following. So this one is collect on the is not collect on delivery. And then we have a collect on delivery. And yeah, if five of those not collect on delivery are followed by the collect on delivery, then we are finding some, some um, pattern here. It's just an example, but it shows the, the, the power um, of this match recognized clause quite good. So because we're running out of time, I will stop the demo here. Um, but we have a lot of other um, a lot of other queries that you can run uh, in, in the GitHub repository. Um, we, we have um, example queries, how you can, um, I can show you real quick. Um, how you can maintain materialized views with a little bit more sophisticated examples again. Um, we will also show how you can write results into MySQL um, by simply creating another table. And this, like with the JDBC um, connector, we can write into, into MySQL again. Um, we can also visualize that with Grafana if we want. That's also part of this Docker image. Um, yeah. If you're interested, you can have a look at that again. I will also share the slides afterwards. So I want to give you some outlook or like also some, some status of the current uh, Flink 111 uh, features. So for, 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 op uh, for the operations, um, we support regular select from where queries. Um, regular group by and having clauses. Group bys can happen non-windowed, or you can have the streaming optimized um, tumble hop and session windows. As I presented, we have different join semantics, time window joins, inner outer, non-windowed joins, so regular SQL joins, inner outer. You can define your own user-defined functions for scalar aggregation or table valued processing. Then there are some operators that only uh, supported that are only supported in streaming right now, like um, over windows with bounded and unbounded proceeding semantics. 
then this inner join with this time version or temporal tables, external lookup joins, uh, match recognize. And for the batch side, we fully support the TPCS, um, TPCDS benchmark. And a very important feature that I just want to highlight again is the recently added changelog processing support. So we support a Debesium, the Debesium format now. So you can connect to the CDC, change data capture um, logs from Oracle, Postgres, and so on by, by using um, this connector. And you can read that, for example, from Kafka and then perform queries uh, on top of that. There was also a talk from my colleague Marta, also here on, on, on ApacheCon. Maybe you're also interested in that. Um, in general, Think SQL is evolving very fast. We are adding a lot of features every month or every uh, every release. Um, you have the possibility to connect many systems in the data ecosystem. You can run continuous queries at scale, both on static and dynamic data. And you can do a lot more. As I said before, there are a lot of other APIs, notebook support, Python, and so on as well. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. See them. So the first question was, how does Flink SQL performance in bounded case reading parquet files from instance comparing to Spark? So <clears throat> we are we are trying to be competitive with Spark. I saw benchmarks that even outperformed Spark um, because of the way how the Flink execution engine looks like, because we have a pipeline or streaming execution engine. That means instead of like, um, instead of um, cutting the, the pipeline into chunks, we can also directly forward results that are available immediately to the next operator. So that sometimes also uh, improves the performance compared to Spark. Uh, maybe you can maybe you can search online. I think there was a blog post also recently um, about the Blink Planner and the performance to other systems, but I'm not sure about that. Um, next question is, SQL generating a streaming pipeline with operators behind the scene. Yes, exactly. So you're basically, you're just defining a SQL query. Um, this SQL query is translated um, into one level. So, so Flink's, Flink's API is actually, like Flink's main API is actually the data stream API and the, the, the SQL engine um, generates a plan that uses some some operator stack behind the data stream api but you can also switch back and forth so you can also define a pipeline in sql and then for example you can transform that to a data stream api um, object and then you can work on data stream apis so you can mix and match all the apis um, together yeah Are there other questions? So is it possible to, yes. Blink on Kubernetes is supported, yes. And it's getting more and more attention, I would say. And better integration. Other questions? We still have two minutes left. Okay. So just to mention it again, if you're interested in Flink or in SQL, there is also our own um, conference very soon, like um, in October 19th to 22nd. Um, it is again a, a, a virtual conference and um, it's also for free. So you can register there for free. And we are also offering training. So there is a dedicated, I think, half day or one day SQL training with hands-on exercises if you're interested to learn 
to learn more, I would really recommend this conference. And we have amazing keynote speakers, I think from Epic Games and from LinkedIn. So if you have time, feel free to join. I see one more question. Um, is Flink SQL NC SQL compliant? Yes, we are trying to do that. Um, but even NC SQL sometimes mean that every vendor has slightly different semantics. But yes, we are really trying to be SQL compliant. We are reading the SQL standard all the time um, to be sure that we are not creating something that you cannot use in a, in a different uh, system. So the, the, the DDL might not be SQL compliant, but the queries are definitely SQL compliant. Okay, cool. So thank you very much. I think it's time to wrap this up. It was nice to present here and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.